officially recognized court that is put on by the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma, the American College of Emergency Physicians, the National Association of Emergency Medical Technicians, and the Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care. The number one cause of preventable death after injury is bleeding. And where can I use this training? As you saw from the PowerPoints that we put together just about anywhere, and those are all the different places also. The goal is to identify, recognize life-threatening bleeding, stop the bleed, take steps to stop, stop the bleed like pressure, packing, and tourniquets, which we're gonna learn all about tonight. Um, your safety is your first priority. If you are injured, you cannot help others. Help others only when it's safe to do so. If the situation changes or becomes unsafe, stop, move to safety. If you can, take the victim with you. And that is pretty much if you take the TCCC class that is moving the person off the edge and then treating them. Uh, your safety is your first, your very first priority. You wanna wear gloves if you can. If you get blood on you, be sure to clean any part of the body that has that blood has touched. And you might wanna tell a healthcare provider that you got blood on you and follow up with his or her correct indiscretion. Um, if you tell me, I'm probably going to tell you that you might want to follow up with the health department. I would add to that, if you have them available, eye protection. Safety, yes, mm -hmm. eye protection, eye protection all day long. Yes. Um, ABCs of bleeding control is to alert 911, and B is bleeding, and C is compress. A, alert 911. Call 911 and know your location or roughly your location and follow instructions that are provided by the 911 operator. And they are very good on giving instructions, especially if you say, um, so there's bleeding. Bleeding, you want to find the source of bleeding because you're going to have to cut flowers, you're going to have to get down and dirty and figure out where they're bleeding from. Look for continuous bleeding, look for large volume bleeding, and look for pooling of blood. Bleeding. There may be multiple places the victim may be bleeding from, and clothing may also hide life-threatening bleeding. It could be bleeding from the arms and the legs, or it could be bleeding from the neck, armpits, and groin, or the entire body, or the general torso part of the body. Compress and pressure. Apply direct pressure to wound. Focus on the location of the bleeding. Use just enough gauze or cloth to cover injury. If bleeding stops, if pressure stops the bleeding, keep pressure on the wound until help arrives. There's my <coughs> Moving at slow pace to show you how to do it. Just like we stop the bleed teacher. At least it's red so you can wash it. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, because you can't tell if there's bleeding. Compressing and packing. They use a lot of these plastic <clears throat> body parts. Um, and from other teammates that have used the plastic body parts, they say that it was kind of cool. But from my TCCC class and packing wounds that were actually pieces, chunks of meat, you were actually kind of almost like you were pulling with a piece of meat with your body kind of hit. Um, compress packing. For large wounds, superficial pressure is not effective. Um, if bleeding is from a deep wound, pack gauze tightly into the wound until it stops the, bleed, the bleeding. Hold pressure until help arrives. Don't want to ever let up on that pressure. Um, just be careful that there may be sharp objects or fragments of bone within the cavity. The 
this is uh, packing with a hemostatic jar. In reality, you possibly you'd want to be wearing gloves while doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why my mind's going to. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I guess that compresses the gauze more tightly inside the wound. Yeah, I think it did too. Um, with the compressed packing, you have the arms and the legs again. You have the armpits and the groin. Compressed with a tourniquet. A tourniquet. Uh, stage three made a resurgence after the Gulf War that started in 2001. Um, and a lot of our service people have come back and some of them have lost extremities, but some of them are alive because tourniquets were used. So to help with the process of you learning this, we have several tourniquets back there. Um, they're all training tourniquets, so they're only used for this. But there is a cat tourniquet, which is the orange one. There is a soft T. I think there's both the generation one and generation two soft T back there. Cat is combat action tourniquet, which is actually what they're going to show you here in a video in a minute. Um, the soft T's are special operation forces tourniquets. I first learned on a cat T when I went to my first wilderness um, medical class. I thought they were way cool, so I guess you play with the soft T, and I like them better. Um, both have their advantages. Um, the cat tourniquet is good. If you're by yourself, you can apply it to either arm or either leg. The soft T, you can apply it usually to the legs. It's a little harder unless you're leaning against the wall for you to be able to apply it to your arm. The soft T is actually made, there was a special operations forces person who watched one of his team members die and took all the parts of the original special operations forces um, tourniquet and made it so everything on it is like metal or it would come off of a Humvee. The original one was, and that's pretty much what they did that one with. The cat, on the other hand, there's a lot of Velcro and a lot of stuff made out of hard plastic, so you can choose on your own this yeah, way. Yeah, you really have to watch the knockoffs that are coming in. And yes, yes that's it. The plastic has this break in there. They're, they're real cheap. Well, as was put to me in my PCCC class is, do you want something that's made out of plastic? Or do you want something that's made out of metal that you know it's not going to bust? Yeah. Um, and then we have the SWAT T back there. The people, it works great, I think, for animals, but it's not the greatest thing for trying to put on humans. Um, it's just a big thing of um, plastic rubber stuff. And I don't know if there's still a rat tourniquet back there. I think it is, because I think we have a bunch of different types of tourniquets back there. The rat tourniquet, nobody has quite figured out how to make that work. It's in and I think there's a because you'll do that and you also get to pack some stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. we argue all the time. I think Daryl does soft tea, soft tea, soft tea. He does soft tea. I'm a cat. It just what feels best in your hand better because you can in the middle of the middle of the battle you want to be able to know and feel it at night. And your last it. choice would be using a belt or. Um, something that you might have around a, a wire or something to, mm -hmm. to make a turn <coughs> I think they're hitting a bandana back there that they can make a turn yeah. Uh, for the tourniquet, apply two to three inches above wound. Do not place over the elbow or knee. Tight the tourniquet until bleeding stops. And do not remove the tourniquet. I know some people want, like paramedics and doctors, want to remove the tourniquet the fourth time. No, don't remove that tourniquet. They can do it out of your sight, but you don't let them do it while they're in your sight. Uh, 
There's two students with a tourniquet, just those two to three inches, which was what I originally learned. And the TCCC class is as high and tight. So if the injury is like around your ankle, you want it to be up as high as possible. Um, when, you're, when you're talking about femur, you definitely want it up higher on the upper leg just because that artery likes to bounce around. Can I explain that? Okay, in TCCC, if you got a lower leg that's got an injury, okay, and they want it high up, they don't want it down low, and here's your reason why. What do you have down here? You have a tibia, you have a fibula. So if you crank down on that tourniquet, you got a chance of grinding those bones together. So that's why they say bring it up high. Okay, same thing in the arm. You have the ulna and the radius. So if you, if they say they slice their hand right here, and you put a tourniquet here, you're pushing those bones. You got to put the fracture those bones. And that's true. They so fracture you, mine. You want to come up here and do this, um, and that's the reason why in the T C we go high. And that is things that we've learned uh, through the combat and everything that you put it down here, you're going to to uh, you can break those bones and. Right. Right. The Probably other thing is, is, yeah. is that since 2000, okay, uh, and I haven't gotten no new data because we haven't done anything with TCCC, but uh, since two years ago, there's only been uh, two people that have lost their limbs to tourniquets in the war. And it wasn't because of, I mean, some people's legs, like the guy at the uh, Boston Bobby. Marathon, I mean, his is gnawed up. But I'm talking about, you know, if you had a cut or something and put a tourniquet on, it was an American soldier and uh, a uh, I, Iraqi person, civilian. But what it was was that they would put, they would put tourniquets on them. And the, the tourniquets, um, they kept being pushed back. The American soldier, he was 18 hours before they got mm -hmm. him flown out to the hospital. That's why he lost his extremity. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the, uh, the uh, Iraqi person, he's a civilian, because it took so long to get him somewhere. So with what we got here, what we deal with around here, Really seriously, you put a tourniquet on somebody as close as we are to the hospitals. Or you put them in a car, driving cold, going to the hospital with a tourniquet on. It's not going to be devastating. However, mm -hmm. around the wilderness, it takes a long time to get somebody out. Mm -hmm. But those two people that have lost those extremities to tourniquets, it was over 16 hours. Mm -hmm. I don't see us around here going to be over 16 hours yeah. with somebody on a tourniquet. So. Uh, that is why when you first, uh, back in the early 90s when I first took my EMT and all that stuff, tourniquets was a last resort. It was a no-no. But after uh, the uh, Afghanistan war and everything has come about, about and, and that's why it's so much easier to, to put tourniquets on. It does, you know, especially around here, we're not, if somebody here in the Louisville area is going to have a tourniquet on for 16 hours, there's a lot of other problems before right. that. So right. Right. slapping a tourniquet on somebody is, is not going to kill them. We had a gentleman stab himself, cut himself open the other day. We strapped a tourniquet on him. Uh, he was profusely bleeding. Uh, we had a, a gunshot wound uh, down here. A guy got shot in the femur. We didn't play no games. We just went on and put a tourniquet on. It's not a, it's not taboo anymore on tourniquets. But you put that tourniquet on, you stop that bleeding. Uh, especially uh, femur fractures and stuff like that. Uh, especially a gunshot wound in the femur yeah, area. Seen them where I was a kid, back in the seventies. You know, mom and dad wanted to put that on me. Like, <coughs> they always take blood and put a T on their forehead. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they're not teaching that anymore because you, you transport patients. If you're a vocation, you can't really, you know, grief everyone who's on this leg, they're going all over the leg, 
I, I would do that now because it's just something my mom and dad did once. I was taught to use a sharpie on your forehead. That's what I thought too. Years ago. That's what I had people wear sharpies before that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> this is back four. On our on our vest that we had fire department for active shooter stuff, oh. we have we have uh, two. We got a black and a red permit marker. Mm -hmm. And the uh, black, you put Y for yellow, R for red, you know, and then the red one is for T. Oh, okay. And the way we do it, you put T, and then you draw a diagonal line, and it's R U, L U, R R, or L R. Mm -hmm. And what that tells us is Sorry, what's that? where you got a tourniquet. Again, with some more information about the tourniquet, you can apply it to others or on yourself. It can be applied over clothes. You want to have not a bulky amount of clothes, but it can be um, put over a light amount of clothes. If it's being placed over a pocket, ensure the pocket is empty before you put the tourniquet on or it will not be effective. Um, tourniquets hurt, and I mean, they're gonna start complaining that it hurts because you're tightening it down, you're making that arm go numb, However, don't listen to them and just keep cranking on the tourniquet till you get the bleeding to stop. And never ever loosen the tourniquet until they get to a hospital where they can manage it better than you can out in the field. A second tourniquet may be required to stop the bleeding. If one is, you go um, a little bit above, I believe it is, of the other one. Which one's the, usually, the blue tourniquets, or the cap, blue cap tourniquets, are the training tourniquets. Ours is orange because we started using it as training before I knew the blue was that way. But you don't want to go out and purchase a tourniquet and then play with it and play with it and play with it and play with it to be sure you know how to put on the tourniquet because then when you need it, it's not going to be as Effective. tight or as strong as you really need it to be. Do have the strap that goes across this other time. Mm -hmm. I was so tired of that one beforehand. Just gonna let you go. You might pass them out. There's several <coughs> tourniquet models that are commercially available. The Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care, also known as the COTCC um, or TCCC, is the resource. The Committee of, on Trauma. Stop the Bleed Program utilizes for direction regarding equipment. You can do an improvised tourniquet, but they say that unless it's applied correctly and unless you know really what you're doing, you shouldn't use improvised tourniquets. But if that's all you got, that's all you got. But this is soft tea in the cat up there. Sam Medical, it makes the Sam Slims. We've got the Sam XT. Pepper spray, I've never used. I think I've played with one or two of them at the TCCC class, and there is a whole bunch more that's out there. Those are the ones that they recommend. If you're going to use one that blows up, these are the two that they recommend for that. Definitely wouldn't want to use a pneumatic tourniquet because you don't really know if the pressure is staying in there or not. Bleeding control in children and all but the ex extremely young child, the same tourniquet used for adults can be used in children. For the infant or very small child, the tourniquet is usually too big. Direct pressure on the wound as described previously will work in virtually all cases. For large deep wounds, wound packing can be performed in children just as in adults using the same technique as described previously. Frequently asked questions, uh, impaled objects should be left in place and not removed. Um, did you get a set of objects as a window? <laughs> the immediate responder could apply a tourniquet above the object. Professional medical personnel, fire, EMS are trained to treat impaled objects. 
Usually you leave them in place unless they're blocking the airway somehow or they're like really, really large and sometimes you might have to have like the fire department come in and cut it down so that it's not. Loss of arm or leg is occurring for the fear that the tourniquet could result in the victim losing their arm or leg. The immediate responder places the tourniquet on the victim, reassure them that placing a tourniquet on a victim will save their life and far outweighs the loss of an extremity. <coughs> Which is true. A life is more important than your extremity. Pain. Victims will experience pain with direct pressure, wound packing, and tourniquet application. It is important to manage their expectations regarding all three techniques for control, for controlling the bleeding, and just pretty much just sit there and talk to them and tell them everything's working out okay. Or Summary. Um, Personnel, personal safety, alert 911, <coughs> signs of bleeding, compress with pressure and or packing, compress with a tourniquet, and then wait for help to arrive, and hopefully it won't take that long. You can go to stopthebleed.org for more information. You can also, where I pulled this PowerPoint off, but you all won't be able to do that because you're not instructors and it's on the instructor site part of it, but you can also go to a, a control bleeding.org. The only thing more tragic than a death is a death that could have been prevented. And in the PowerPoint that I had, um, and I, we talked about, and Bud talks about the Dutch Creek Protocol a lot, that was a death that could have been prevented. And because nobody used a tourniquet, and nobody realized how severe his injury was, by the time he was able to be airlifted, he pretty much was gone. That all could have been prevented by at least putting in a tourniquet. Because it's been a couple years since the Route 91 Music Festival thing. But they had a bunch of the first responders that responded to that come here to Louisville and talk. I went to that. I would have loved to have gone to that. <clears throat> Just to hear what they had to say. Not the situation, but to hear what they had to say. But Sean gave me the case study that they sent out on that, and I have read some of that. Um, and that's pretty amazing, some of the stuff that I read. Felt sorry for those hospitals because everybody went to one hospital. Mm. And they had a lot of people out here. One thing I did get to hear, and that is Jim, the Journal of Emergency Medical Services, had like some webinars that you could go to. And one of them was on the, I mean, it was amazing listening to him talk right now he was like we eventually started running out of stuff we were grabbing shirts that were laying around and taking our shirts off and using them to you know pack wounds to cover wounds to <clears throat> cover people's bodies up he said we ran out of tourniquets we had to end up cutting stethoscopes to be able to use as tourniquets because there were none and we needed to have them I, I mean, talked to a cop out there because we went out for a week the week yeah. after and my husband and I go to Vegas four or five times a year, and we usually stay right directly across from yeah. from there. I talked to a few of the cops uh, that responded to it like the week after, and they were saying the same thing. They were taking oxygen lines and yeah. cutting them, cutting them down and twisting them with ink pens or anything they could get their hands on. Okay. They were using. Mm -hmm. um, any kind of tubing that was not stretchy that they could get their hands on, shoelaces, mm -hmm. tripling them up, and just doing anything they could because this is not, there was this is not no a be your friend thing either. Okay, this is serious, and you got to pack it. You can have uh, 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 heel stats or. But what we're going to do is <coughs> for a lot of that stuff is real expensive, okay, and you don't have it. So with ours, with our kits, we put gall in until we can, you know, because of our budget and everything. So basically what you're going to do, this is like a, like a, I did two, one's a gunshot wound and one's a laceration because you deal with a lot of, because of some of the stuff I've dealt with. But what you're basically going to do is you're going to take this out, okay? 
and like this this wound here, whether it's gash or whatever, you're going to pack that wound, stick it down in there. Used to that was a no-no, but now packing wounds is a, a good thing because they do it. Uh, when I had I had the uh, uh, MRSA in my knee, and they had I had to pack that. They probably had uh, gauze with iodine yeah, on it. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, was, it was like a little the rope. rope in. Yeah, a little rope, and I had yep. to pack it stuff. And I did it myself. <coughs> so sometimes I got queasy, but, you know, <laughs> I had to do that. So basically what you're going to do is you're just going to rod this up, and you're going to start in here, and you're just going to keep pushing. And yeah, see his technique though, I think it's a lot better than what right. you on the video. But she what I'm doing is yeah. I'm going back and forth. Because what I'm trying to do is whatever is making that bleed, I want to get in there. Right. Now, here's the one thing you got to be careful for is let's say, for example, uh, let's say that uh, this is they've got a wound from an explosion. So might set a bomb off or something. Mm -hmm. Might have debris. You got debris and stuff in there. Right. So you got to be careful if you stick your finger in there and you get a cut. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's one of the things. You just keep packing the wound back and forth. Okay. Or for like the, he is, he just keeps packing it. Once you've got it packed, and I mean, you want to use as much as you can where you can't get no more in there. What I do is take the rest, put it on top of it, oh. and, and hold it. Pressure. Okay. Now, once I've got that, then what I end up doing is, like, see, he's wrapped his. I'll mm -hmm. take another gauze and wrap around it to hold pressure. Mm -hmm. So this. Yeah. Now, if it bleeds through this, tourniquet. it's time to, well, sometimes you take this out mm -hmm. and, and take it off and repack it. Okay? Continue repacking. Okay, but that's you don't just, just add to it. Right? No, because okay. what the reason why you pull it back out mm -hmm. is you may got it in here good, but you got void space right here because gotcha. I can feel right yeah. here. Gotcha. So that's why you pull it out and repack it with yeah. another one. So okay. and you really got what that, I was doing there. You really got to yeah. feel. I mean, you can feel. Here. You got to get down yeah, in there. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. with, you know how deep it's going. But you, yeah, you've got to. Because like over here, there's a. You know, yep. it goes back in the corner. And that's why you want to stuff, you know. Right. And it, don't, don't grab it like this and pack it in. You take it right. little by little, a little yep. and stuff it down in there. Yep. They're not going to like it. Oh, no, no it's going to hurt. It's going to keep them alive. Yeah. Now, here's the stupid question. I'm a girl. Guess what I have available in my pack? Yes, yes. they work very yes. well. Do yes. they have a string? They work very well. They, I've they, used the, them before. The, okay. The nice thing about that is is that the only issue about I know they expand right when they absorb the blood and yep. everything yep. if it's like like for example uh, it's a, got an entrance wound right and you've got that and it goes in there but the the only issue with it is if if it's a gap gash like this right. you may not get enough in there you well, know when, when I, I put it in when I've there. done in the past it, when we didn't have anything like this what I've done mm -hmm. in the past is usually they're gonna have more than one. Right. Yeah. Tell you, give me all of them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so like on this one here, I would have taken probably three, depending on the size of them, I'd right. have taken three and I'd have shoved them yeah. in that hole this, and, and this then what? pulled them. You know, this, this one, one I would have laid there. them down yeah. and pushed yeah. them in and then pulled the string. If yeah. that's all you've got. Right, right. Yeah. if that's uh, all you've got. And I carry OBs with me. And that, those are no, I don't need them anymore. Right. Yeah, but, but they I carry them four different sizes. Wow. Yeah. And even maxi pads work. If you don't have yeah. a tampon, maxi pads. Maxi yeah, pads. Carry them too. I carry maxi pads as trauma dressing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. the big thick ones for yeah. trauma dressing. Yeah. You can do that. The big thing is, is like this gash here. If if that's what you had, yeah. I, Okay. Put some tampons in there. Okay. And lay, lay them, lay them down. in there. Lay them yeah. down. Because they expand. Yeah. The mm. only issue is, is that it may expand, but it may not stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if that's all you got. Like <clears throat> yeah, if, if that's all you got. But, yeah. Well, it, but Cam, um, you made a good point. We don't care just one. No. 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 <laughs> no. Yeah. No. You got to well, Give me work. all of them yeah. because I'm using all of them. Right. During right. the uh, Iraqi war, uh, I don't know how it, but the Marines got a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. A care package that wasn't the right one. And uh, 
they put them in the kits and the Marines were using them mm -hmm. for gunshot mm -hmm. wounds. They yep. put them for yeah. the gunshot wounds. So. Well, and you know, some of them do have the applicators so you can kind of guide it in there too because it's a slippery surface mm -hmm. or like, you know, I, yours doesn't I carry have an because they're now, that big. Yeah. This they don't right, take up no room in my pack. Yeah. This right here, we you know, we've got gauze and you get the hemostatic that's got right. the clotting agent and stuff yep. in yep. it. There's all right. kinds of, and you'll learn more about that if you take the TCCC because there's certain things that they use and certain things they don't use now because right. of what it does to a wound. If you don't have this, if you got a shirt, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. t-shirt or something, whatever you have to do to pack it, pack it.